So here we are at the corner of Mercer Avenue and Main Street here in Northbrook. And uh, I'm in the mood to do another building kit, you know, after I did my machine works. A pal of mine sent me a cool eBay listing for a nice structure that I think would fit in this corner real nice. So we'll check that out in a minute. But um, what you're looking at here, this little chop suey takeout restaurant is a downtown deco kit from several years ago. And next door is a nice little river leaf kit the elbow room, one of the many bars down here in, in Northbrook. And the building I have has a nice uh, corner feature to it with some large windows so I can detail the interior out. And uh, what I might do is I'll probably keep these buildings but rearrange them. So I'm gonna go in the shop, I'll show you what I got. I'm gonna build the shell of it and then see how I want to arrange this corner. What I might end up doing is building sort of like a, a mini diorama to uh, basically install on this block here. So go check it out. So here's the kit I got. It's made by Frenchman River and I'm not sponsored by anybody on this little YouTube channel of mine, but I just thought this was a nice looking building and I went out and got it. Um, I actually got it off their website. They, they run like a 10% off coupon once in a while and pay for the shipping really. But anyway, it's, it's kind of a narrow building with a nice um, large window feature here so I could probably detail out a nice bar scene in here and maybe a, an apartment above. So let's open this box and check out what we have. So here's what we, what we... There's a pretty decent looking parts nice and crisp it's usual with a lot of these uh craftsman kits you'll get a few extra details looks like the uh steps it's pretty nice i believe this is resin um very clean castings i did kind of take a peek at this but uh i haven't gotten into it too much Nice signage. I don't know if I'm going to go with the Pete's Tavern name. I may customize the sign a little bit. But uh, give me a minute. I'm going to uh, free the wall sections from their uh, packing here. So here are the wall and the cornice sections. As you can see, it's not a very large building. Um, it's only like two and three quarters of an inch wide. And kind of like a lot of the downtown deco buildings, they're not selectively compressed or anything like that. They're just small buildings with small features. So you can pack quite a few into a, into an area, but really nice castings. And uh, yeah, some kind of resin, very crisp. So you can configure the uh, configure the building to be either right or left-handed. Um, and I think I'm gonna go with the left hand. I do have another spot for this potentially, but I think this is actually the best spot on the layout because you'll see it um, from the front edge. And like I said, with these nice windows here, I could put a little dirty grungy bar in here. Boy, that's nice brick. That's where the sign's supposed to go. And I, I like how he popped some of these bricks out. I'm not sure I wanna cover that. Maybe I'll do one of my decaled painted signs. Um, that little hanging sign, where is it? That was really nice looking. I want to use that. That's a really nice piece. So I'll just probably custom make a sign for this. Nice signage. So yeah, what I'll end up doing is I'll, I'll just assemble the shell and use it for testing the fit up. Because I have some other buildings kicking around in my shop that might complement it. So here's the uh, basic shell assembled right now. You see the uh, nice corner shape here. So it was a little, a little bit of a challenge with this 45 degree wall, just getting it set up. So I had this kind of pro set up here where I could keep the uh, end wall square while I got that last 45 degree section glued up. And I don't really get too fancy when I'm gluing these walls up. I use these one, two, three blocks to set 
you know, one, one corner on edge, glue it up with CA, spray it down with some Instaset. And I like this Gorilla Glue. Let me just get this at Home Depot, this extra thick stuff. It's really nice. So I just wanted to get the basic shell assembled. And uh, then I can start playing around with it on the layout. And with the orientation I have here, it's definitely going to go in that Mercer and Main corner there in Northbrook. So kind of nice for, you know, for a resin kit. It's really, really crisp. I don't know what kind of resin this is. So basically, once I'm, I'm happy with... Uh, where it might go, I'll start thinking about what I want to do with this building. So the big challenge right now is it's a small building. So there's going to be a bar on the first floor here that I want to detail out with some nice lighting and stuff. Some nice mood lighting for the uh, local inhabitants. Um, and I want to put an apartment upstairs, but this building's pretty small. There's a back door here. There's going to be kind of an entrance door here. So I got to kind of figure out where the stairwell might be. Um, a building like this, I'd be inclined to put like a, an outer stairwell or maybe even like sort of a lean-to wooden structure off the back here. But this is going to be facing away from the edge of the layout. I'm trying to avoid that right now. Um, this building's pretty small, but it's still pretty good size. It's, it's about the size of like your typical downtown deco building. So let's go play around with it on the layout. This here is a potential neighbor. Um, I had built this shell when I was working on my little Northbrook expansion area. And I built the shell up and I never really used it. So you can see, I started working on an interior. It's gonna be some kind of a shop or something. Anyway, it's a potential neighbor. I was thinking it has to be kind of spread apart here. Maybe one of those small buildings like that elbow room building that I have would be good in here because, um, you know, this has windows and be nice if they could see into the nice alley below there. and see what's going on down there I guess but this was a um a design preservations models I think it was a birdies tavern uh you may recognize it from the modern uh, woodland scenics buildings you can get them already built up with an interior and weathered so I don't know I'm, I'm kind of all for it you know because these these are a lot of work but uh I might as well use this it's it's already more than halfway there, I think. So let's just, maybe I'll take them both out to the layout and uh, move some stuff around. You can see some of my urban scenery efforts here. This is all painted masonite. You can see the black section is the uh, pretty much a baseboard of the layout here. But uh, I got that chop suey house there taken out of the way. So I'm gonna move that elbow room and see what this looks like on this corner. That's kind of one idea. It has to be uh, pushed back off the sidewalk a ways because it's going to have some steps into the doorways. But that, that's kind of the general idea. So I think we're about three and a half feet from the layout edge. So you'll be able to see the uh, interior pretty well. I don't know about that Birdie's Tavern building. Um, I don't have to go too crazy on the uh, details with that because of the angle. I never really see into the front of it. I'm not sure I want to use it there. The building on the opposite corner, if you can see that. That might not stay there forever. So let me try putting the two original buildings that were on the... Uh, other street on uh, Mercer Street there by that house. I'm gonna put them uh, going down Main. Let's see what that looks like. This might be the most viable option right now so far. So I moved the uh, chop suey house over and I moved my scratch built uh, kind of generic brick house over a little bit. Put the elbow room on the other side of the bar here. This could work. I'm just thinking, once you start moving the buildings around, you can drive yourself a little nuts. So try not to go off the deep end here, but just trying to figure out the best visual for that. I think that's pretty cool there.
Looks like I got a successful print here. This is my idea for doing the interior, sort of like an insert. I've done this before on some other buildings, but you know, using styrene or basswood or whatever, I thought I'd 3D print this. It was a bit of a challenge. I had a few failures because my spool kept getting tangled. As you can see, I've run the spool down a bit, but uh, third time's a charm, I guess. Let's get this off here and see if it fits. You can see the failures. At least I was able to test part of the fit. So the idea is I'm gonna have this stairway going up into the apartment above. I thought that was the best way to lay it out. And with this wall coming out, the bar will kind of run along here. I'll have another door here. So let me, uh, let me get this fitted in here and then I'll try to remove some of these supports. I hauled out the back side of these stairs and this support doesn't even have to stay in here. This was just supposed to be an L-shaped wall. So this will be the rear entrance and utility and an implied entrance maybe to the basement where the stairway, stairwell follows underneath here. So that'll be the back of the building. Let's check this out for fit. Oh, what do you think? I think I got pretty close. You know, um, I don't know if I mentioned uh, in any of my videos lately, but... I changed my slicer over to Cura and I got way cleaner um, prints out of this pretty humble Creality printer. And uh, I think that fits up pretty nice. So the idea is that as an insert, you know, I could work on this outside of the building and then just kind of slide it in here. But uh, that's a general idea. Let me uh, fit some windows on here so we can get an idea what it'll look like. All right, so there's the the side rear door, so you can see it sort of lines up with that rear section. You can see the stairs going up. Eventually, when I start fitting up the uh, inner furnishings here, um, I'll have some kind of bar that comes out. That little perforated section, that's just the supports for uh, a door that'll go into the back of the bar. I may put a wall across here, I don't know yet, but basically, the stairwell will be at the back of the, uh, the bar, I guess. And then up here, once I pop that out, um, I'll figure out my wall arrangement. I don't know if I was gonna make like a back hallway here or something yet. I haven't figured that out yet. Maybe, I was thinking maybe um, bathroom in this corner. I don't think I'll be modeling a bathroom downstairs. Um, it'll be sort of implied that if you wanna, patrons of the bar wanna use a bathroom, they go through one of these doors into the back here. But. So I tried to line up this alleyway door into here. So I think this is going to work out pretty good. Decided to move those supports out of the uh, rear hallway so you can see the door that'll go to the back of the bar. Didn't really have to, I guess, but I wanted that door Why, you know, I wanted it as an opening. So, uh, the slicer created this as it supports for this section. I was almost going to make this as separate pieces if I got one more failure. Um, you can see where my, where my, uh, this one here, I forgot to do the supports. So that's what it should have looked like if I stopped that one. But this one, the uh, filament broke sometime about 40% through the print, so. Um, but if I was gonna have more failures, I was kind of thinking of printing this in sections, but I guess I didn't have to, so it worked out pretty good. Just clean off some of that support material in there. It should be pretty cool, I think. So this will be basically uh, the supports for all the, the detailing I'll do. So I'll cover the walls and the stairs and the floor with more believable materials. Basically, this is just like the skeleton. I thought it worked out pretty good. I really love having this 3D printer. It's a lot of fun. So this is the basic interior, as you can see. This was the uh, first floor bar room area with kind of like a utility room 
implied access to the basement, maybe a bathroom back here. I squirted some primer on here. I may end up wallpapering this, I don't know yet. Anyway, that's the first floor, and these, these pipes here are gonna be for the uh, second floor lighting. I'm gonna run some LEDs up through these tubes, and uh, they kinda live inside the building where you won't see them. This is the second floor print, and uh, this would be a small bathroom here on this corner, and this is just a wall to uh, cover up the stairwell. So I'll assemble it into the building and show you how it goes together. It's a basic idea. This will probably, this second floor assembly, probably just stay in place. You see how the walls work out. You can see the stairwell. So here's these little light standoffs. They'll be in a location that you won't really see, and then the lights will be up in here. So kind of like uh, kind of like poor man's sconce lighting or something. You can see the bathroom light will be there. So I think that's all I'm really gonna do for the upstairs apartment. So I made some furniture. I will show you that. This is the downstairs bar print. So it'll go in here, just like that. Printed a bunch of these little bar stools. And um, I do about five or six of them in there. Some couches of my own design. I, I tink, did these up in uh, Tinkercad. You can see two slightly different sizes, just playing with the dimensions. Um, probably gonna use these smaller versions here. Uh, also some bathroom fixtures, some sinks, two different sizes there to play around with. You know, like a wall sink. And uh, somewhere in here, I also did a toilet. Did this, kind of freestyled this toilet in um, Tinkercad. It should be good enough. Um, my philosophy with this is that it didn't have to be perfect, perfect, since it's an interior detail. I don't know, it was the first time I ever tried to make one. It didn't take long. I think it looks all right. You can get a little handle on there. And um, this bed's from one of these mini dollhouse furniture collections. You probably see these around. You can get these for like one or two bucks. Um, I got a few. Um, the bed was kind of primitive, though, and uh, I, I 3D printed a little mattress and some pillows for it, and I'll cover it up to make it, uh, you know, to put a blanket on there. So that's some of the furniture. It's a lamp from the that kit there. So that's what's been going on. Um, this is the back wall of the bar. I went through a couple iterations of this. You see those beer mugs and bottles. I, I, de I designed the bottles in Tinkercad. I was able to put them on these shelves. Beer mugs were uh, a shared design from Tinkercad that I modified a bit. So it should be pretty cool. I went through a couple iterations on the back wall. I just thought it'd be kind of cool. That was an FDM print with resin printed shelves but this is a full resin print not too worried about the warping and you know the backsides where all the supports went on um once it's in place ought to look pretty cool that's kind of the concept so far i'll probably have like five or six bar stools here maybe um maybe i'll put like a little table somewhere else too a little high top kind of table or something that's the idea. I kind of wanted to have a few of those stairs coming behind the shelves. I don't know. We'll see. See how it works out. I also made some beer taps. So they kind of rest on the back of the bar. You know, I keep snapping these handles off too, but that's, that's the idea. I have a pristine print sitting around. I went back and forth with these handles trying to make them better. So here's the final iteration. 
waiting to be used. So, so next, I'm gonna do a little bit of the lighting. I have another assembly here that I 3D printed for the downstairs. And I had these Plastruck lampshades. So it's channeled out over the top. This will mount on the ceiling. And uh, these, these three lights are spaced to go over the bar. So it'd be like that. You see, I got a conduit to direct the wiring toward that light standoff too. So this is kind of a rough idea for the upstairs apartment. As you can tell, it's a very small building. Um, so I had to kind of decide what was gonna get put in here. And I thought at least a, a nice bed, at least a couple of chairs, bathroom for uh, sanitary creature comfort. Like I said, with some of these buildings, they're so small, you kind of have to uh, rely on a little bit of uh, suspension of disbelief, I guess, you know, and, and to put enough detail that uh, a viewer might actually think there's more than, than what's actually present, uh, if, if that makes any sense. <laughs> so um, when this goes together, you know, I'll have some nice, you know, decorations on the wall, some paintings and maybe an old calendar or something like that. So it should detail up pretty nice. Same with the downstairs, I'll have some old beer signage and stuff like that so not a whole lot of detail but just enough to uh help you fill in the gaps i guess all right it's a little bit chaotic here so what i'm going to do is clean up and get ready to do uh a little review on where we're at so far so at this point i probably should have filmed a lot more of this progress but it was it was pretty hectic there was quite a bit of painting going on detail painting um so you see i've got some of my floors done i'm using my clever models collection i'll show you that here in a minute and i also got some uh, led lighting in place so i'm going with these pre-wired 0603 leds and uh they're wired to uh, these 1K resistors, and uh, I can adjust the uh, brightness as I see fit. Probably use the same power supply I, I have uh, available for my machine shop. So this is where we're at. Um, just about ready to, I'm gonna clean up the wiring here, get it routed through the base, and I'm going to uh, insert it into the shell here and, and see what we got. I'm still trying to, Decide what I want to do with the upstairs here. This is my Clever Models collection. Um, you can still buy these uh, paper model kits off eBay. And I think you can buy like a memory stick of them now. And um, I use the uh, walls and floors for my interiors for some of the uh, stuff that doesn't need so much detail. Here's the shell with the uh, windows and doors kind of just friction fit for now. Probably pop out if I touch these, but just to give an idea what you can really see as the building gets assembled. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the lighting so far. The, uh, the interior color was, uh, I think, Vallejo Model Air, aged white. And uh, as you know from my weathering videos, I'm not the biggest fan of that paint, but I think for getting color onto a structure, it seems to be working pretty good. Anyway, that's what you can see with the windows and doors on there. And uh, I may have some room for maybe like another, like a high top or something, or maybe a set of chairs here for patrons to hang out in. And uh, looking good. So here, here's the top floor, the apartment, or maybe a dining section. I don't know what I wanna do yet. But that's how the lighting's gonna work for it. You, you work out for it. You can see those those kind of standoffs I put in there. You know, you don't really see them because they're they're kind of hidden behind the wall. So so far so good. Um, 
quite a bit of work, but uh, kind of now it's starting to pay off, you know. So next will be a little more painting, I think. Maybe some more detail placement, um, posters and pictures and, and things like that for the walls. And uh, I, I still got to decide what I want to do with that upper floor. And then I can start on the uh, the exterior final assembly and, and painting and signage and stuff like that. And then, then I got to make a base for it. So that's what we're looking like so far. Well, I'm in the process of printing some more furniture for the upstairs. Um, and in the meantime, I got to thinking about these windows. And I decided to uh, cut these panels out. And that, that'll give some more view into the uh, bar scene here and at the right angle you can see my my lighting so I think that's a nicer look I did it on this side too although the stairs it's really not much to look at but I, I thought this kind of opened up the uh, bar scene down here a little bit I, I thought it just looked a little nicer all right so excuse the voice i got a bit of a uh, cold going on here but it's it's on its way out i think i got it on the run anyway here's what's been going on <clears throat> i printed up a bunch of stuff uh some doodles out of tinkercad and uh, resin printed some custom fitted furniture for this upstairs apartment i needed some you know bedside tables and stuff and, and they had to be a certain height because uh they're gonna be over by the window so uh that worked out pretty good. I finally got my set of beer taps for the bar here. They're finally in place. As you can see, the handles were kind of tricky. I kept snapping them off, so I just kept printing them over and over again until I got them right. I had to shorten the handles, basically. That's what happened. So here's some beds I designed in Tinkercad and printed up and uh, got some uh, covers on there. It's a blue shop towel with a bit of a wash and a dry brush over it. Um, I thought the blue color was about um, right. And uh, here's like my red leather uh, modern seating collections. I tried to make them look a little beat up and shop worn, you know. So we'll see. Uh, these parts don't have to be like perfectly detailed for where they're going. Um, I made some high top tables for the bar. I think I can fit a couple in there and then a bunch of loose bar stools, different sizes here. So uh, I'm going to start populating the interior. All right, so I'm doing a second go around on the uh, roof print. It's going to do a skylight on here and uh, this one didn't land in the right spot. And I also found out I had to extend the roof about four millimeters in that direction because I used the floor as a template for this. So anyway, while that's printing, I just thought I'd show you what the interior insert looks like. This is kind of where we're at. I got a lot of the uh, decoration up. Got a couple figures in here. I used my uh, scrapped out beer mugs, as you can see there. Here's a second floor. Interesting, you can see what details get stuck to the walls. So I, I, I even uh, 3D printed some picture frames for some of these images I got off the internet. You can see here, that's what the second floor wall assembly looks like. All right, so this is how it goes together. This is what I kind of came up with. Probably what I'll start doing a lot for my future builds. Um, this just slides right up in here like that. You see the uh, top floor, and then my second floor assembly here, walls and the uh, roof beams. Slides right down in here. And then uh, and the roof just slides right across. So like I said, I'm reprinting this roof because I wanted the skylight in a different place and I needed to extend it out. It's kind of the basic concept there. That's what we're looking like with the lights so far. Cozy digs up here, I think. I'll put these uh, windows on and show you what, what the lighting looks like now that I uh, cut those 
windows out. So I think with these windows opened up, it looks a lot better. Just exposes the interior that I worked so hard on a little better. Let me see this photo back here. That's from my layout. <laughs> Pretty cool, I'd hang out here. Here's what I ended up with for uh, colors on this building. Um, I did the brick with 50-50 uh, boiler brown and freight red here with this uh, this rail center acrylic made by Ammo. It's the first time I use this stuff, I picked this up at York. I was intrigued by their uh, color selection. It's always good to uh, keep investigating more options for acrylic paints. So uh, this is airbrushed with that color combo. And as you can see, I went and picked out some of the bricks, darker colors, lighter colors, that kind of thing for some variegation. It's the interior. And uh, with the windows, I painted the frames <clears throat> wood color first. And then these are actually brush painted with some Tamiya dark green. And there's a, uh, there's a layer of this chipping medium under there. So what I'm gonna go do after is pick some of the paint off, see if I can get a nice chipping effect on these windows. I'm gonna work on that, and then the next thing will be, we'll do some spackle mortar, coat of clear, and then I can start doing the final washes and dry brushing, and uh, maybe, oh, I forgot to paint this. Um, you can see that wood color. We can get into doing uh, final detailing and assembly and all that sort of stuff. Here's the uh, door assemblies here. Here's kind of the chipping effect you get with that chipping medium under the paint. So you take like a damp, stiff, stiff brush, like something like this that I've been abusing for years. And you just rub across. Works pretty good. If you take off too much, you can always just put a little back on, you know, just dab it on with a brush. That's the general idea. And uh, should give me a nice effect, I think. Anyway, I think I'm gonna stop here. I'll do the uh, lower level window and door assemblies now. too much. I also tried some of this crackle medium, but I haven't had that much luck with it providing any kind of crackle effect. could also use like a uh, toothpick or something if you want to do some more targeted chipping. All right, so here's my fancy spackle mortar job. Nothing I'd rather do on a Friday night, listening to some old punk rock and getting my spackle on. So uh, the idea is when I do my brick color, I'll, I'll shoot a, a coat or two of clear over it so that when I apply the uh, spackle, I'm not smearing the color out and making a mess. So you can see, I've Pretty good definition. So what I'll do next is um, shoot another layer of clear over this so that when I do my washes and dry brushing effects and other things like some more like brick highlighting, um, I won't make a further mess, but that's it. These are my weapons of choice. Old stiff brush to work the spackle into the grooves there. Pointy stick. And I just, I just use this Home Depot patch and paint stuff seems to work the best just rub it in with your thumb you know and have at it um the haze kind of helps uh when you you know when you clear over it and then do your uh your black wash or whatever it all kind of adds to the uh aging effect so i'm gonna shoot some clear over this and uh get to uh doing the final weathering wash and stuff 
So I'm thinking this is about where I'm gonna stop on the uh, weathering. I don't wanna go too much further. Um, I'm gonna put it together, maybe take it out to the layout, give it a color test, see what I'm thinking. And, uh, and then continue on with the final details and assembly. I, I also have to make a base for it, so there's some fit up I gotta do on the uh, street corner where it's gonna go, so we're almost ready. This is sort of the final look here. What the interior looks like. I guess you gotta put the roof on there too. I don't know what I'm gonna do about more figures. I kinda just like the barkeep and uh, his one patron there. Kinda cool. That's about it there. Backside's pretty plain, because it's just gonna go hard against another building. And it's facing away from the front of the layout. I don't think I'll put any signage here. But, oh, let's go bring it out to the layout, see what it looks like. So here's about where it's gonna live. Should be pretty cool lit up. I think it blends in with the other buildings pretty good. Looks like it belongs. Here's another potential layout. I'm thinking I'll keep that elbow room next door. That way if you get kicked out of this bar you could just go next door if you've been a little too uh, rowdy but uh i don't know what i'm thinking is that birdie's cafe or whatever that was um i think that'd be a good spot for it i haven't decided what i'm gonna do with that building yet like i said it's just a shell but exposing that whole storefront to the front of the layout would be kind of neat and i'd probably move that brick house down the street a ways I like these older towns when you go visit, you know, somewhere in PA or something, or uh, like Northeast Ohio, you'll just see like a, like just a regular residential house mixed in on a tight main street like this. I always thought that was kind of cool. So I think that that might work there. I don't, I don't know yet. I'm kind of thinking about it. And then the uh, Chop Suey house there will get its own space. But uh, I don't know. I'm gonna mull it over, let it uh, gel overnight or something. Okay, so I cut a piece of uh, quarter inch masonite scrap I had laying around for the base. I'll scribe some concrete expansion joints in here and then uh, bomb it with that Rust-Oleum khaki color I like a lot, weather it up, and that'll be the base. I also printed um, chimney extension out of resin. It took me a couple go arounds just to get the the brick separation right and I got it pretty close to the building brick size but it's gonna go back here I think I'll just have some clutter back here kind of thinking about maybe putting an alley pole with a lamp on here we'll see I might just pop a hole in here anyway for that okay so here's the base got the stairs on here and I also made a, a little um, kind of elevator out of some scrap styrene I had kicking around and I embedded it into the concrete a little bit with this masonite you can kind of um, trace out what you want to embed into it and then cross hatch with your 
with your exacto and then just kind of dig out the chips you can see the chips here and uh you can get something set into it like manhole covers and things like that so see i had to make a little mouse hole here for my connections i i may put a utility pole here so i got a little routing there for the uh leads i might put a utility pole here but let me get some paint on this thing and i want to get the uh, base attached to this and then do the final paint weathering and stuff so here's a uh, concrete base with the steps and the uh, elevator attached as you can see i dry brushed out that elevator with a bit of uh bit of rusty color here some uh, i always forget what they call this just tube acrylics you know um this stuff's cheap and plentiful and uh i use that quite a bit for washing and dry brushing and stuff like that so pretty simple job again that krylon khaki gets you like 90 percent of the way for a good concrete color nice aged concrete color and uh just did a black wash tube acrylics again and uh that's it so we're gonna get the building set upon it all right so just have a few dabs of goop on here just to hold this base on nothing very scientific that's about it so when this sets in theory i should be able to lift the building off here and that lower interior assembly will stay on there if i ever had to So the next thing will be to set my uh, 3D printed chimney here. So I got was kind of thinking it was going to go here somewhere. I don't want it to interfere with my removable roof. So I probably could have slotted this and had the chimney hang over the roof, but then I would have had to modify the roof to uh, accommodate it. I didn't. So, let me figure out how I want to attach this. I'll probably use goop, but I gotta clamp it because it's got a little bit of a bend. It's actually kind of flexible, not too flexible. Because I didn't really add any outside lights to this building, I thought I'd put a little alley pole back here with a lamp. And uh, this is just some leftover scrap from some other projects. Uh, just some 732 styrene tube and uh, this little assembly was from my uh, car shop effort. So it's got a little, I think, 0402 LED up in there. So I'm gonna use this to light up the alleyway a little bit. All right, so we're almost done here. I got the uh, alley pole with a light back here. So the last phase is to do some signage I have a hanging bar sign for the bar. I've come up with a name for it. And uh, then the next thing is to clean up this disaster. Holy crap. Things really went crazy down here. So it was a pretty full bodied attack on this project. I mean, I had the soldering iron out and all kinds of stuff. Dremel, one, two, three blocks. Every paint in my cabinet came out at some point. Well, at this point, I think the Bessemer bar here is ready to go on the layout. So I got the lighting dialed in. And uh, I think I'm uh, looking forward to getting this off the workbench, getting it on the layout where it can be enjoyed, hopefully for many years to come. So uh, let's get out there and get the uh, site prepped for it and get this installed. So at this point, I'm just going to concentrate on getting the building kind of planted in its chosen spot here. So I'm going to uh, pull up some of my uh, concrete alleyways and stuff here. So you can see, here's kind of my baseboard. And this is my 1 8 concrete streets and sidewalks that I like to make. 
So I'm going to have to probably pry up this and I'm gonna have to remake a new sidewalk section here. So I'm gonna get to it. So one last final reconfiguration of the existing buildings, um, plus that new addition of that old DPM, uh, Birdie's Cafe. So directly behind the uh, Bessemer Bar, there is an apartment building that came from the far back corner of Northbrook, and I moved it forward. I, I, I traded places with the uh, brick house that was kind of to the, would have been to the right of the Bessemer Bar, and uh, that was its original location anyway. So I thought these buildings were a little more complimentary, and that apartment will get a mild interior, and... Um, here we're looking at the old DPM Birdie's Cafe kit. And this will get some kind of a, a more intensely detailed interior since it's now facing the front of the layout and pretty clearly. Here's the back side of these buildings. So really nothing terribly exciting. This is the back side of the layout. But I'm thinking maybe I'll do something cheesy like this. Just put a tree and part of a old rickety fence here just to block this sight line coming across this, this piece of bench work. This is actually parallel with the, the back wall there. Um, it's just when I built the town, I put it on an angle that kind of matches this, this uh, spur that I never use. Kind of goes back here. And I felt that made the, uh, just the layout of the town a little more interesting. So you can see that brick house. That's kind of where it used to be. And um, it's just switching. This this is coming forward here, and this is going to take the brick house's spot eventually. But I think I'll just put that back to where it was. I have to repaint that roof. I think that looks pretty cool. I'd live there. That's a pretty cool spot, man. So that's definitely the model railroader's trick. You know, a bush and a fence to just block a sight line. So if you look through that alley, looks pretty natural, really. I tried to do that along the back edge of the layout there. Just probably do like a bunch of broken fences, just so, you know, that the back edge of the layout isn't so obvious. You know, when you get a nice down view like this, when you're filming the trains, it provides for a nice backdrop. But when you lift up, you start to see my, my uh, aisleway in the, in the middle there. I think I'm going to go with this. This is good enough. I, you know, I, I envision in the future, not too far off, replacing some of these buildings. Um, maybe like that, uh, that downtown Deco building, the second one in is the old, uh, I think it was a Murphy's pub kit. I, I've just never been that thrilled with it. I, I almost want to convert it into like an industrial garage kind of building, but I don't know. Someday, maybe I'll replace those two on the corner with something a little more interesting. All right, so I have my sidewalks reconfigured, and I'm just about ready to uh, do some weathering on it. Nice little wash and a dry brush, and then start putting the buildings back in uh, street details. I've got some new details to add, and uh, as soon as I get this stuff out of here show you what i have uh planned so when i do uh washes on my concrete i usually just kind of paint some uh just black tube acrylic into the uh seams and cracks and then you can kind of use your finger or a rag or sometimes i use these foam brushes too um to kind of grind it in and I guess tease it out on onto the uh, upper surface. I always th think this looks best. Instead of trying to, you know, do this kind of thing, you end up making a mess sometimes. I mean, you could do this too. You could use pigments. You could use really anything you want. But I, I just, I think this is a nice controllable method. And uh, nothing I'd rather do on a Saturday afternoon, something like this. Use your finger, you know. <laughs> Why not? Anyway, then I'll I'll come back with a little bit of brown and and maybe even some uh, little rust action and uh, and a final 
dry brush to help pop all the edges. All right, so here's an update. I just have been doing so much here to get these buildings back in place. I've got my street lights in place, got most of the street details back. Um, I've got, let's see, got the uh, interior lights wired up. And now I'm in the process of wiring up the uh, street lights here. So I'll show you what that looks like from underneath. Here's a little insight into my layouts wiring. It, everything is common ground. So my track power and my accessory power is all common. That's this white wire you see traveling along. Um, any blue wire is accessory controls. And then uh, these... These cables here, these two wire cables are my switch machines. So what I do off my accessory power is I hook up these little linear DC power supplies. And on my lighting power, I have a little 43 watt transformer that runs all these. So I'm in the process right now of setting this up and uh, accessory five here turns it on and off. Uh, I like the little pilot light on there. Um, I kind of try to put these local to where I'm using them. So here's here's another one that I'm using for uh, that machine shop up there. And I got to go through and tidy up some of this wiring, I know. But mostly, that's what my wiring normally looks like. But as I hook up more layout lighting, I've got a little bit more tidying up to do. I hate these terminals with a passion but they're really cheap they're just it can be kind of frustrating to use especially when you're trying to work on them upside down so i will tidy this up a bit but right now i go to adjust this power supply for five volts and then i can hook up my street lights and uh we'll go up top and take a look so it looks like my lights are working i got these from uh, eBay, I think it's that We Honest Company. They're pretty nice, I, I just kind of repainted them. Um, they have a nice uh, setup where you can adjust the height on them. You get like a pack of eight of them. So I have them hooked up to uh, five volts right now. Show sure what it looks like with the lights off. Kinda cool. Not that you see that alley light. I have that hooked up to the uh, street light circuit too. Eventually, I'd like to get lights in all these buildings. So I think that looks pretty cool so far. So uh, I guess the next thing is I'll start tidying up, put some more details back, do some minor ground cover and uh, these other Buildings will be another project someday soon, I hope. I moved that one street light a little closer to the uh, corner, just to light up the corner of the building a little better and the sign too. I think it's pretty neat. So anyway, here's what our scene looks like at the corner of Mercer and Maine. And uh, I think I'm going to stop here for now. I got enough detail in place to, to make it look like it belongs. Um, got some figures here. I'm pretty uh, minimalist on the figures. I don't like too many of them. I think after a while it starts to look uh, a little bit like mannequins in a storefront window or something. So I'm kind of spare on, on using them. Don't like to overuse them. But anyway, this is what the scene looks like now. And as you can see, I've got some work ahead of me. I'm going to um, get this building uh, detailed out with a full interior. I'll, I'll figure out what it's going to be at some point. And, uh, and then get that section detailed out at some point. But right now, I want to take a break from working on this this was a lot of work um going down the street here too i'll probably replace one or two of these buildings i've got my eye out on some uh, potential projects 
and like I did with this Bessemer bar here, probably start doing more interiors with lighting and depending on the building's positions, like these ones kind of in the middle of this block, and they may, they may get like a mild interior. But anyway, I'm kind of pleased with this scene, the way it came out, a lot of work, a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff went down during this project, 3D printing, all kinds of stuff. Got to use some of these things of these accessories and street details I've had in my collection for a while. The uh, flasher here, by the way, is one of those Woodland Scenics dealios, and uh, pretty neat. Uh, I got another one I can use somewhere else on the layout, too. So hopefully uh, you enjoyed this project. Hopefully it didn't ramble on too long.